Hey everybody, this is Prowl and welcome to another Minecraft keeping it simple tutorial and today we are going to go over what is probably the most annoying thing in Minecraft, at least to most of us, and that is moving villagers. <laughs> moving villagers is not fun to do. There's a number of different ways to do it. Let's start with the worst, work our way up to the best, at least in my opinion. You guys, if you have different opinions, definitely drop it in the comments section down below. But let's go ahead and let's jump into the worst way to move villagers. So have you ever just wanted to get a villager inside of a house? If you do, if you have, at some point during playing Minecraft, you've probably tried the method of just pushing them. And just kind of hoping that, you know what, this little guy, he'll decide to move into the door. And then I could just like knock it off and just trap him in there. Uh, as you can see, this method does not really work very well. Look, here we go. Here we go. See if we can get him. Let's see if we can get him. And we, no, go further in. And we got him in there. <laughs> Woo that was successful. It doesn't always go that way. But regardless of how it went this time, I think you guys all know that is the absolute worst way to try to move villagers. And you can probably only get them about that far. If you try to go any more than a few blocks, you're going to be, I don't know, you're going to be in trouble. You're not going to be very happy. You'll probably rage quit. The second worst method to getting these guys moved around is boats. Uh, we need to, no, can you get in there, sir? Boats are easy to, to get started with, I guess, but they're really slow. Um, if you can make your way to water though, like I happen to know there's a river all the way down there, it does get a little bit better, but to do that, you have to get over there. You have to make sure that you don't fall down stuff and keep in mind with boats, once you go down, you can't go up. So if I need to go over there, it's not happening. At least not very easy. One of our future, uh, one of our future methods, I'll show you guys an easy way to do it. But once you get to water, if you need to go a pretty long ways, this method isn't really that bad. You can move pretty quickly. Problem is though, is once you get to your destination, wherever that may be, uh yeah you're probably going to get stuck with this issue now the typical boat method can only get you one villager at a time because you got to hop in you got to be the one to steer it and it's pretty slow but if you grab a lead which should be readily available from killing wandering traders which hopefully all of you guys do you can actually pull one of these guys and it's it's a little bit faster than just driving it just make sure that you don't get too far ahead of it because that'll happen right there you have to make sure you keep eye on the boat and make sure it's following you wherever you go. You're still going to run into that same problem, though. Of once you go down, there's no going back up. We got a fix for that, too, though. And that fix is called a bucket of water. All you got to do, carry a bucket of water with you. Drop that guy down. And your boat will float back up to the top. And then you'll just probably want to have a, a block with you to keep getting that water. Or pick it back up with your bucket, whatever. Um, and this is actually a little bit faster way to get around too because as you can see I could drop this here and then those guys will zoom right across I could drop another one and they'll zoom right across again Like I said, this is great for getting these guys up hills not even just a one tall little hill like that But you can even get these guys up something kind of crazy like this too I can go up to pretty close to the top here. Maybe even all the way to the top. I could drop that down Oh look, he actually followed me up if you go up high enough, they do kind of hop up, but they can still have trouble. But if you go up right here behind this water stream, this guy, he'll, he'll float right on up to the top. And as you can see, with not too much problem, come on, buddy, come on, come on, and lead him over to where the water is. There we go. We can get him right up here. No problem at all. No problem at all. Lightly easier to move your villager around. Still, if you have to go far distance, this is probably going to take you a little while. Now, this leads us to probably the most used method. If it's not, it really should be. This should probably be your go-to method for moving villagers from one location to another. And that is a mine cart. It's not too bad, although it can be a little frustrating sometimes. You need to set a mine cart track down, set a mine cart down, get a villager inside of it, get him on the track, actually. And then we can go ahead and actually launch him off. We could put this guy right here. Let's push him back. Yeah, he's on the track now. And then now we could take this really anywhere we want to. 
And really the main thing while doing this is you're going to have to have a decent amount of powered rails. Um, you can space them out a decent amount, but you don't want to space them out too far because if you do, your, your, your minecart's going to stop. So go through, place a couple powered rails, maybe every, I don't know, probably about 15, 12 to 15 blocks or so should be fine. Um, if you're going downhill less, if you're going uphill more and bring yourself a whole bunch of switches because these guys are going to help you out a lot. We can go through here. We can probably put down a couple more here. Yep, that should do it. And then we can go up this way like this. We're about to go up a hill, so we should probably put one or two like right here as well. And then eventually we can get to our destination. Eventually, you're probably going to get to an area that's just not easy to cross or you want to take a more direct path. So also make sure you bring yourself plenty of blocks. That way you can uh, put those down, go over top of water or even go across like larger like paths between mountains and a lot of other things. Also, here we go. We got a pretty steep incline here. I might get us a nice boost with a whole bunch of rails. And I'll probably as I get close to the top here, we'll, we'll throw in a couple more just to make sure that our villager can clear it. And like I just said, sometimes like if I want to get on top of that mountain, I probably don't want to go down and then try to find some way to weave back up. Instead, I'll probably actually build myself a little bridge. So I'm going to do this in creative mode. It's a little bit easier for me right now, but you guys can build yourself a little bridge across. And once you start getting close, like if you're going up, you probably want to do a little bit of this action right here. Just kind of staircase this guy up until you get on. Oops until you get on the same level as the ground you're trying to get to something like that should be good and then we can just repeat the same process we've been doing and bring those powered rails and regular rails all the way across and in most cases i do recommend maybe even hopping in the minecart yourself and trying it out just to make sure your villagers don't die or get stuck or something like that but in this case we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a ride with this guy and we'll go through and make sure we get ourselves all the way down And there you have it. We made it all the way down with the villager. That was a nice quick little ride. Great way to get this guy back and forth. But I'm not done. You may think this is the best method. And maybe it is. But I got a different method that's going to work a lot better if you can't find any villagers anywhere. So this last and arguably best method is not going to be for everybody. It's going to be a little bit dangerous. You're going to require a little bit more of an advanced... Um, I guess like place in the game because you're going to need some different materials to do this. But if you're in that type of position, this is going to work great for the person that really can't find a village with villagers or maybe the village just a really long ways away. And to demonstrate this, we are actually going to need to set this to let's do midnight and we need some mobs. Now this will only work, ooh, those would be really bad. Um, this would only work if you're in medium difficulty, it'll work 50% of the time. If you're in hard difficulty, this method will work 100% of the time, but we need to run around. In this case, I'm in creative mode. I'm gonna stay there because I don't wanna die during the tutorial. And we need to find ourselves some zombie villagers. So let's do a little bit of flying around and see if we can't get some of these guys to load in. We got a group. We got a group of three of these guys right now, and I've actually run close enough to get them all to follow me. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pillar up three blocks high like this. They're going to want to get us, but they can't. OK, and now what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to box them in. So I'm holding shift so I don't fall and I'm putting a block right there on the second block up. And I'm going to probably do this in a kind of like big space. Let's move over some. That way these guys can't get to me. So we got those. So we got two of them in this general area we want them to be in. Now we got three of them in there. Let's go ahead and let's move over this way a little bit. Oh, we didn't get where we wanted exactly. That's fine. Um, let's close in. Okay. We have to move them around. Let's close in this side now. Oh, looks like we got another straggler over here. That's fine. We'll kill him off if we need to. Okay, and then look, now we can start to box these guys in just like this. And look, now move back this way, like this. Perfect. Now these guys are boxed in. Nothing can happen to them, but we do not want them to despawn. If we go more than 44 blocks away from these guys, they're gonna despawn. So let's see if we could throw them some blocks. Not all mobs pick up blocks. Some do, some don't. 
Okay, so only one of these guys took a block from us. So he is now what's called persistent. He will not despawn. These other two guys, you got a couple of options. You can either A, name tag them, and they won't despawn either. So put a, take, get a name tag that you found somewhere in the world or traded for. Uh, put it into an anvil. Put a name on it. Name tag them. They won't go anywhere. Or what you could do is you can just go ahead and convert these guys now. Now, before I do that, one important thing before you guys do that too, if you're going to wait, if you're going to sleep and turn to daytime or it's about to turn daytime, really for any reason, basically, go ahead and put a roof on this because when it turns daytime, those guys are going to, they're going to despawn or they're going to burn up. Also, yeah, I've cheated a little bit. I put myself back into creative mode, so I don't have to worry about these guys fighting me. Um, but now that we, like this guy right here, he really wants to kill me. I just looked at him. He's probably not happy. Um, now... We're going to go ahead and do this now because we don't have persistency for all these guys. So let's go ahead and let's get it switched over to daytime. There we go. It's now daytime. You're going to want to probably go around and clear out all the mobs in the area. Kill creepers and stuff so you don't die. And then we're just going to we're going to close this in the rest of the way. We don't really need to, but we're going to. We're going to poke a couple holes in here. That way we can see these guys. We need to see their beautiful faces because we're about to use a method of changing these guys over from zombie villagers to villagers. I will show you how to get these things, but for now, we're just going to use them. We are going to throw a splash potion of weakness. And we're going to feed each one of them an apple, a golden apple. And then once we wait long enough, these guys will change over to villagers. And while we wait on that, let's go ahead and show you guys how to get these wonderful materials to do this. And here is the part where, again, this might be a little bit harder, but I want to show you guys how to do it. Because once you know how to do it, it's really not that bad, especially if you don't mind hunting down the materials. So first of all, we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need a crafting table. We're going to need a brewing stand. And you're going to need a netherite block. I'm just kidding. You don't need another right block. You just need the brewing stand and the crafting table. Okay. Now you need to go do a little hunting. You need to find yourself a spider eye, a mushroom, brown mushroom, and some sugar. Spider eye, kill a spider. Sugar, get some sugar cane. And then the brown mushroom, they can be found anywhere in your world. Uh, usually you'll find them in wooded areas on the ground, or you can find them in the nether on the ground as well. And you're going to make a fermented spider eye. Now, you want to take that fermented spider eye, you want to go into your brewing stand, you need to take a blaze rod and turn it into blaze powder. Put the blaze powder in there, and then we need to put the spider eye up here, and then the water bottle right here. And that spider eye is going to cook down, fermented spider eye is going to cook down into the water bottle, and that's going to make a potion of weakness. As you see, the bar is going down here once it gets to the bottom. We'll have a potion of weakness, but we will not be done with that quite yet. It is now raining in my video. Why is it raining in my video? I don't know. Um, now we have a potion of weakness. Let's go ahead and let's change weather clear. I don't know why that happened. And thank you. All right, now that we have our potion of weakness, we can go put this back in up here at the top or down here at the bottom, I mean. And then we need to put gunpowder at the top. Now, this gunpowder is going to get added into the Potion of Weakness, and it's going to make it a Splash Potion of Weakness. That way, we can throw it at the zombie villagers to cure them. And then, while we wait for that to finish, go over to your crafting table. If you haven't already found a golden apple in a chest, you just need to take a regular apple that you can get from trees. Put it in the crafting table. Surround it by gold, or just pull up your crafting menu. And you there have crafted yourself a golden apple. You'll need one of those for each zombie villager. But if all of your zombie villagers are together, the splash potion will work just fine. But because it splashes and it gets all of them. And there we go. They have changed over. They, they tried to kill each other, but they're fine. They're okay. They've changed over to villagers now. It takes about two minutes for that to happen. And there you go, guys. The villagers, they're probably the most powerful single entity in the game because there are so many things that you can do with them and that they can do for you so i thought it was a good idea to show you guys how to move these guys around because not anybody really ever goes over that you just kind of see it and pick it up as you go so there's your top ways to move villagers around if i forgot any let me know or if you just have 
he just linked to something um or if you have like some really funny like cool interesting ways that you've done this before definitely hit me up on twitter or in discord i like to see screenshots and or videos of that because it's, it's villagers are pretty funny to be honest with you so show me your crazy contraptions also if you haven't already click the like button click the subscribe button ring the bell to get notifications all those good things that make me happy please 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 thank you and you guys have been great goodbye